hit the record button. Perfect. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Olga St. Pierre. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is one of my favorite topics because all it's about prepping and organizing. And this is like get your family all ready and back to school is what we're going to talk about. So just real quick with Zoom, you are welcome to kind of pipe in and chime in anytime you would like to, if there's anything else, or if you want to suggest something, or you are welcome to wait until the end where we definitely have a, uh, a few minutes afterwards for some Q&A session as well. And I know that there were some questions that were posted in the, in the, during the registration. So we'll definitely talk about those things as well. So let me share my screen and we will jump right in. Okay. Just let me know that you can see everything looking good. Here we go, slideshow. All right. All right, everybody. So let's get organized. So just a little bit about me. I am one of the uh, approved and uh, favored, I think, presenters and workshop holders with our, our library system. And I'm glad to see so many of you here. So I just wanted to introduce myself to you. I am a, a mom, a, a wife, a business owner, and as I think many of you will relate, we, we just kind of have lots of different hats that we're wearing. Uh, my name is Olga St. Pierre, and what I do for a living, my job is I am a real estate agent. And our team works and covers a lot of, a, a lot of territory. We work with clients primarily in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And our team mission is to help anyone with the dream of owning a home actually come true. And as you know, when you become a homeowner, a lot of the times it doesn't end there. We are a part of the community. We're always here. So we are here to support you being sustainable and a responsible homeowner right here in our community. So we do that by doing and hosting lots of these workshops, supporting uh, fun, uh, charitable organizations and fundraising events that happen in our community. And amidst of all of that, with the work that we do is we also help our clients and their friends and coworkers move pretty much anywhere in the United States or Canada, because as you can imagine, it's very stressful to move. And it is truly our mission to make it as smooth as possible. We also have a concierge service that's available to everyone. It is absolutely free of charge. Think of us as your yellow pages from A to Z, anyone that you can possibly think of that you may need from contractors to, to accountants, to attorneys, anyone else that you can think of, I can assure you, if you want to pick our brain and say, hey, I need someone who will praise my antiques or I need someone to get some heavy stuff uh, out of our basement, we can probably make some recommendations. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. So let's get started. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about preparing for back to school. And what I find interesting is I have a lot of friends who are also in the South and a lot of their kids are already back to school. So I am seeing, you know, like first day of school on my Facebook feed. And I'm like, wait a minute, like I'm not there yet. And then I just have to remember that a lot of the schools in the South are already back in session. And here we are, what I am thinking about right now is getting ready. Um, I am a planner. I do not like to leave things to the last minute because I want to be able to sleep at night. So today, what I want to share with you is just some of the things that have worked for me that are currently working for me. And when I asked some of my friends and clients to say, hey, what do you do to make your life easier when the school starts? What are some of the hacks that are you, you are using to juggle everything that you have on your plate with work and kids and family and activities and still be able to have fun and grab a breath here and there? So the collection of the information that we're sharing with you today is a result of 
a lot of these collaborations. So that's what I wanna share with you today. And being that this is now still kind of beginning of August, what I'm encouraging you to do is just take it little by little, but make a plan. A lot of you know that I'm a big believer on using notebooks, physical notebook, not jotting notes in your phone, but using a physical notebook, right? So I, I have a few of these and I jot some thoughts down. I try not to keep a lot of information in my head because otherwise it just keeps kind of rolling around in my head. And then I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about stuff. So my suggestion to you is when you're kind of trying to make plans for September and you think, oh my God, there's so many things I have to do, write some of them down, make some lists and put it on paper. And I can assure you that you will start feeling better and more prepared and more focused because you have an action plan that is kind of starting to shape up because it's not just somewhere in your brain universe it is actually on a piece of paper and it's you know black on white. So my first suggestion to you is what you see in front of you on the screen is recommendation on how to make sure that your car, the vehicle that you need to get everywhere is there to help you and support you in your mission of juggling everything that you have going on in your life. So I separate it in two categories. So the biggest category is our humans. That would be you and your kids and maybe your furry uh, members of the family as well. But think about what is it that you do every day, how often you are in the car, and what do you need? So with my work, I spend a lot of time in my car on some days where I am showing houses to my clients. So I know that on those days, some of the things that are important that I have in my car are water, which means that I actually carry at least a case of water with me all the time. And right now, I'm just mindful because now my water is in the cooler. I need to make sure that I have that with me and as well as the uh, pack of ice to make sure that my water stays cool. I also carry neutral snacks with me. That has been extremely important and helpful to me because I know myself and I know that if I don't eat on time, I can feel my sugar dropping and I will get a migraine and I truly become hangry. My whole family knows when mom is hangry, they know to stay away or they know to bring me some food. So just brainstorm and think about what is it that's important to you. So some of the suggestions that I have here for you, yes, toilet paper and paper towels, neutral snacks, uh, Clorox wipes, Windex, trash bags, hand sanitizer, absolutely must. Phone battery, charger pack, a blanket, beanies, gloves, Ziploc bags, and some shopping bags. Because as you know, in some areas, we don't have plastic bags in grocery stores anymore. So you need to have shopping bags. So just save, save yourself the aggravation and just keep them all in the car. So the trunk of my car looks pretty packed. I actually have a toolbox as well that I use for my business just in case I need something. However, what I do know is though, even though my car is packed most of the time, I know that it's packed with the things that I may need and it gives me the peace of mind when I'm on the road. Now, the other part of being prepared with your car is taking care of your car as well. So make sure that you have jumper cables and air pressure gauge, first aid kit is a must, flashlight, WD-40, that has come in handy many times for a, very, a lot of different reasons. Basic toolkit, your car registration and insurance card and your manual as well, because you just never know. And once you know that you have those things, again, it's gonna give you a peace of mind knowing that you are prepared because you never know when things are going to happen. And you know, Murphy Law, if something if something is going to happen where you don't, we're not, you're not prepared for that particular one thing. You know what I mean? So let's talk about saving yourself a trip. This is one of our favorite tips. And number one, this website, I just used it today. I needed to fax a referral for my daughter to our pediatrician's office. So instead of mailing things or going to the office to drop it off, I used a fax zero service. It's free and you can send faxes to different places. So just read instructions because it's free up to so many pages. So you can't really fax many pages. However, in most instances, I found this to be just sufficient and it just saved me the time and aggravation, especially with the cost of gas right now. Next, plan for things I ahead. And I know sometimes it's kind of hard to think about, well, you know, my daughter's birthday is not until the end of the year and I'm just gonna deal with it then. Don't, 
think about it now. Think about how many birthdays that you know you will have, how many birthdays parties you may need to attend because you can kind of gauge an idea based on the past years and just plan ahead. If you know that the stores are having a good sale on something that can be a, gen a general but well thought out gift, just get a couple because you probably can use them down the road. So planning for unexpected, buy cards in bulk for birthdays, for graduations, for thank yous and congratulations. The, the trick that I use, I actually buy cards in bulk that are blank. They are beautiful, they're neutral in color, which means that you can use them for both females and males. And you can write happy birthday, you can say congratulations, graduation, thank you, everything. And you don't have to worry about running out of cards. Gift bags and tissue paper, plain neutral various uh, sizes you can buy for any occasion. If you just buy it in bulk and you have it, this way you don't have to rush out to the store when you realize that you need it because you have an event that's happening tomorrow or a birthday party that's happening in the next few days. You can do a lot of these purchases at your local dollar store, right? Guys, it does not have to be expensive. It can be very simple. And you know what I actually also love is I buy reusable bags at Marshalls or TJ Maxx. You probably have seen them hanging at the register and they are huge. They, a lot of them come in beautiful colors and guess what? There are 99 cents. So I also love those because not only are you packaging your, your gift in a beautiful bag, that bag is also reusable, which your friends and family can then reuse it maybe for shopping for themselves as well. So you can store these things in your closet. You can put them in, in a clear tote and maybe put them under your, your, uh, your bed. You can just put things away. And you know what? The same thing you can do with gift cards. Um, I often send out thank you gift cards to Starbucks. They're $10 each. You can do $5 gift cards. Very simple, yet it's the thought and the card that is really going to go a long way for you. My next recommendation to you is grocery shopping service. One of the best ones that I use myself is called Instacart. So anywhere that you can go pretty much, including BJ's and Costco and even CVS and Walgreens, Instacart a shopper can do the shopping for you. And I have used it quite often where I was in the process of showing houses and I knew that I needed certain things for, you know, for the prep and I was short on time. And what I have done is actually made my list on my phone, scheduled the delivery when right after or right before I was getting home from my appointments. And then when I actually got home, my bags were waiting for me. And I knew that they were not going to stay out for too long because there was nobody in the house and I would just bring them in. So just think about this as an option. The pricing is a little bit higher in some cases and you sometimes do need to have membership, but think about how much time it would save you and the frustration. And God forbid you go to the grocery store when you are hungry, right? Who has been there? It is the worst time to go, yet you know you have to, and then you push yourself and then you get mad with yourself and then you have this internal conversation. So I think you know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about additional things on how we can save ourselves some time. I think this is something you can relate with. One of the best things that I have done for myself, and when I talk to clients and friends and you know, they ask me for some of these time-saving tips to kind of help them ease their mind, is the idea of paying all of your bills and putting them on auto pay. And that comes in handy when you go on vacation and you realize that your card has to be paid and you're on vacation, you don't have your computer or you don't remember the login to the online bill pay. And then you start panicking and then your whole kind of vacation relaxation mode goes down the drain because you're not worried about being late making a payment on your card. My suggestion to you, just put all of your bills on auto pay. This way, it's the least of your worries. You don't ever have to worry about it. And you can also indicate how much you want to pay. So let's say maybe that you don't want to do auto pay all the time. It doesn't mean that you cannot schedule some of your payments ahead of time, maybe when you are going to be away. But yes, that means that take, that takes planning and time, okay? 
My other recommendation to you is put all your bills that you can and pay them with a credit card. And the credit card that I prefer to use for myself, that's my preference, is the one that gives you cash back. The other, there are the people that use credit cards to provide them with airline miles. Again, that is a personal choice. However, as many bills that I can pay with my credit card, this way my cash back bonus grows. And just think about it this way. It's sometimes one or 2% or even more, depending on the type of card that you have, you are getting back in cash money. And then just sits there and then you can get that money back. You can actually get that money as a check. And then some, a lot of the times, the amount of money that you can actually earn as a cash back can amount to a good rainy day fund, which you know I'm a big believer on. You need to have a rainy day fund. You know, if you have a unexpected uh, medical bills or credit card bills or your car breaks down, you have that money set aside. So it's one of the greatest ways, in my opinion, is to have like a little bit of a backup. Have a notepad. Here we go. Notepad reminders again. Have a notepad in your fridge. We have one that is hanging on ours for the whole family to use. And I always tell them, if you see that we're running out of something, please put it on the list. My daughters have the worst habit of telling me that we run out of something before we go to bed. They'll come over and say, hey, mom, just want to let you know we are low on milk. And I'm like, nope, nope, don't even go there. No. I told them, I am not going to be thinking about the fact that I need to buy milk when I'm trying to fall asleep and relax. I said to them, listen, if you don't want to go downstairs and put that on the notepad, don't. Then jot yourself a note on your desk. And then tomorrow morning, go put that note on my, you know, somewhere in the kitchen. And then and if you can't, and I will write down myself. So we do the grocery list. We talk about reminders, some kind of other thoughts and whatever. But the goal is to have your whole family participate and understand. And it's also, I think, is teaching your children discipline your children, your grandchildren, it's teaching them the discipline of knowing that when we're running short on something, put it on the list. This way you are prepared when you go to the grocery store next time. And a lot of times I'll just take a picture of that list because I sometimes forget to tear out the page. And then I just use that as my grocery shopping list. So that way I get what I need. Take advantage of curbside pickup. I have done this with BJ's. I love that. And you know what happens when you use the curbside pickup? It kind of takes away the idea of you browsing and also <laughs> buying things you don't need. So this is, I think, really a, a money and a time saver as well. The next one, some of you may or may not agree with me, but getting a house cleaning twice a month is a huge time saver. And also, if you think about it, when you get home from work and you know that the cleaners just left, when you walk into a house that's already been cleaned and organized for you, it's a huge relief off your shoulders. You don't have to do it every week, right? You do it every other week. This way you have the one week on, one week off, and then you have them do the biggest bulk of the cleaning for you. I think it's totally worth the money. Wi-Fi smart plugs. Technology is only gaining steam. So just think about how you can use some of these smart plugs and outlets and other gadgets to your advantage, right? You can save money by have, being able to use like an app on your phone to turn on and off your phone, uh, on and off your switches. You can also use the app to get your AC, like you can turn it up or turn it down with your phone. There's lots of really cool things that are out there now and they're all about being very friendly and also being able to save you money. Let's talk about making it fun and making it easy. I have some even recipes here for you. You can make some overnight notes. I know they're extremely popular. If you see some of this stuff, like I noticed some of these really cool things on, um, on TikTok. What I encourage you to do, I think the hardest thing is that we don't realize that these things are available and we start running and we just run and we don't think about these things. And what I encourage you to do is that what works for me is I just make myself a note and I, I really just put it on one of my kitchen cabinets. So that way, when I get into the kitchen in the morning, or if I want to do my prep the evening before, it's the visual reminder that works for me. So think about how it's going to help you and then decide and you know, involve your family and say, hey, we're going to have some fun. Who wants to try a new meal or who wants to try something new in the morning and see what your kids uh, tell you. 
So here I even included some amazing, very quick, very easy recipes. And you can find a ton of them as videos, as uh, blog posts. And you, you know what I do? I print them out and I will put them on my kitchen cabinet. And I say, you know what? That creamy tartellini sounds really good. And it's really, really quick. And of course, the benefit is if you have a slow cooker, if you have Instapot, like I'm a big Instapot user, it saves me time and frustration. And what I love about it, you put stuff in, you close it, you go get a shower and you get ready for the evening. And then you come back and the meal is ready. I love it. So think about maybe some of the appliances that you, you have in your home, maybe that you haven't used in a while and say, okay, how can this tool be a part of my system to help me? make life easier and still prepare a delicious dinner. And I can do that while I am kind of winding down for the night, right? So that's where your slow cookers, your crock pots, your pressure cookers, your Instapots are all going to come in handy. Art projects. I know we actually took this from our decluttering workshop, but I thought it would be something fun that I think a lot of our moms have some guilt when we have, I don't know, two tons of artwork sitting in our house and we feel bad about getting rid of them. We're kind of trying to figure out what to do with them. So I have some suggestions here for you is if you want to get creative and maybe you need to make some room in your totes or in your craft area or in your office for the upcoming school year, right? Because that uh, artwork is only gonna be coming again. It's just gonna have a new grade number right in front of it. Think about some of the major pieces that you may want to have and you can frame them, you can create collage out of them. I have used just a um, string and some uh, pincers and just hang it. You can just do that, you can swap things out. And I have really slimmed down my collection from my girls because now they're in high school. So some of the art that they're creating, I do have it on display and some of it I actually have as pictures and then I have it as an album on my phone and the actual art gets recycled. So I don't feel guilty and I don't feel bad because I still have it in my memory album. So that is another idea for you and what you can do with it. So organizing important documents, I included a couple of slides here because as you know, for us, organizing paper, I think is one of our biggest challenges that we have. And what I can tell you is that you need to work on it every week because mail gets delivered to our house six days a week, every week, unless there's a holiday, which means that you really need to st stay on top of things. And what I do is I have a very simple system. I am very mindful about not overthinking and overcomplicating things because that's just part of my personality. So with mail, I'm like, okay, I have three piles, right? So right now I'm sitting in my office. I have a shredder on my left. I have two baskets. One basket is my recycle basket. The other one is my trash. And then I also have a drawer where important things to be reviewed go. That's it. I have to review drawer, have a recycle can, and I have a shred pile. That's it. And you don't have to make it very complicated. So once a week when your mail comes in, please open it up, take care of it, whatever needs to be recycled, what needs to be shredded, and then a pile of your documents to go through. You spend one hour on the Saturday morning, you process everything, whatever needs to be paid, reviewed, handled. And then I also scan everything in so that way I have a digital copy in case my physical copy gets faded or it gets ruined or something else can happen. I have two cats, you just never know. Or if you have a dog, dogs chew paper probably as well. So if you don't have a scanner, I have a simple printer that I use, but because I also need it for work, you can always use a Genius Scan app on your phone. And there are some other apps that are available. It's very easy to do. If you don't wanna use an app, you can just snap a picture and then use the gallery on your phone as your like electronic filing cabinet as well. How you label your system and keep things uh, organized in your household, it's really up to you because it depends everyone has a different uh, circumstances, but I just have some ideas here for you. Again, don't overthink it. Don't make it too detailed. Just have some general categories and put everything in there and then have skins of all your documents. This is a very important slide that I encourage you to print it out or if you want, we can print it out and send it to you as well. 
I get this question all the time. Well, Olga, well, how long should I keep some of these papers? Maybe this is why I don't want to get rid of things because I don't know if I'm going to ever need it. So here's just a good rule of thumb for you. First, a couple of categories of things depending on what it is. I think the biggest ones are the last two towards the bottom. What I want you to really pay attention to is your keep forever pile. These are documents, government documents, things that you have accumulated throughout your life that are memories that are legal documents that will be very difficult to replace or almost impossible to replace if something happened to them. So what I encourage you to do is purchase a safe or have a safety deposit box and you keep those documents there. I can't tell you how many times I'm working with families and I ask them for certain documents that we need in order to get their affairs in order, in order to figure out what we're doing with the house and they can't find them. And it becomes extremely stressful when this information has to be found in order for us to proceed. So I am just wanted to kind of share this with you to help you prevent the aggravation down the road. If you're just being mindful when you see these documents, just to keep them all together and they have to be in a safe place as well. All right, some tips and tricks that we have found and I have found surprisingly useful. So one of them is actually dish soap. So I am a converter to Dawn, just plain blue Dawn. And what I have found it is that I use it, of course, for dishes, but I also found it amazing for fighting stains. I have removed some stains from some of my favorite clothes that I haven't been able to do any otherwise. So I encourage you to try it out and see if that's going to work for you. And actually a friend of mine just posted on Facebook, one of her kids left a Sharpie in a piece of clothing and it marked her whole uh, washer, I think a washer or a dryer. And she said what she did is she first used the rubbing alcohol to remove the uh, Sharpie stain. And then she followed up with a nail polish remover, the acetone, and that helped as well. So there's a couple of other tricks for you. And I kind of saved it. So I was like, oh, this is a really good idea. So I'm going to write that. What I also did is I actually printed a stain guide, depending on what kind of stain it is, what you should use. And I printed it and I just taped it to my cabinet where I store all my detergent right in my laundry room. This way I don't ever have to go anywhere. If I have to take care of something, I know exactly how I'm going to do that. Okay. Uh, many stains will benefit from blotting. So we have some ideas here for you. Tie to go is what I always recommend when you're traveling or when you're going out, because if you are wearing a favorite blouse or you know, your favorite piece of clothing and you spill wine or you, know, you, you drop some, uh, some food on it, by the time you get home, you may not be able to get rid of that stain. So tie to go may be one of your best friends. So do you guys have any good tips to share with us today is what I want to ask you because that is it for our tips and tricks and kind of getting back ready to go back to school in just a few short weeks. So I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, and I do wanna to mention to you, just so you know where to find us, if this is your first time hanging out with us, we host different topics in Zoom workshops just about every week. So you can find the list of our workshops right here at Bitly Live with Olga. We update it every week with the upcoming topics. So you can check out some of the things that are coming up for the end of August as well as September. And all of our recordings are posted on my YouTube channel, which is Penn Jersey Living with Olga. And if you would like to connect with me and stay in touch, most of the time I am hanging out on Facebook. Or of course, you can always reach out to us via a phone call or an email. We're just a short um, burst away. That's what I have to share with you today. And let me just see what some of the questions. I know there were some really cool questions from the registration. So suggestions for easy to prep lunch for, for the kids. You know what? I think it depends on the age of the kids because my daughters are now in high school. So I asked them, I said, what, what food do you want to take with you. And if it's going to vary, make me a list again. And I have them put it on the door of the refrigerator and I buy it for them. They know where everything is. And I've stopped making lunches for them when they got into high school. I said, okay, you are big enough. You need to make your plans and you need to plan ahead. So that's kind of part of us 
learning to be responsible as well. For younger kids, uh, a lot of the foods that I did for them, I liked, I wanted them to have hot foods for lunch. That was my own preference. So they actually uh, carried small thermoses with them with different things like, you know, ravioli, maybe some leftovers from dinner that they really wanted to have and some healthy snacks. And I think it's just a matter of preparing and having lots of choices. Like I would go to BJ's or Costco and just buy different options. So that way they couldn't tell me, oh, I already had this yesterday. Oh, it's boring. You know, I don't want to eat it again. We would always have a few options for them to vary throughout the week. And at some point I actually did kind of create overall like a chart, you know, like on the Monday, it's going to be this with a couple of variations of snacks or a different type of fruit, because at some point you start going bananas because you're like, okay, I don't know what else I can possibly pull out of my cabinets to help them have some variety. So I completely understand that. How to eat the frog straight away and not leave things too late and then end up being disorganized. I think I covered a lot of these things here and I am I can tell you that I had to run over to Target yesterday and I went through and I got some of the notebooks that I know that we're going to need. And I always buy some of the things that I know I need in my business now because the, the, the good sales are happening for back to school. So my suggestion to tell you my suggestion to you is that majority of the people will procrastinate and they won't get to what they need to buy until the last week before back to school. So if you want to have the most variety of things and to be able to just shop and be able to just enjoy it a little bit, do it now and just get it over with. Just tell yourself, you know what, I'm just going to do it early. I'm going to create my list. I'm going to go get it done and I'm going to pat myself on the back and buy a Starbucks beverage on the way out of Target. Right. So maybe reward yourself after the shopping. Right. So. OK. OK, if you register through the library system, we do not have your contact information, so we have no way of forwarding the recording or the workbook with uh, to you. So if you want to send me a private message with your information, we're happy to get everything over to you. All right. Uh, Desi said a laundry cleaning service is so helpful. They separate and fold. You know what? I just discovered this. I didn't know that this actually exists. Do you have any more info maybe that you can share with us if you want? Or if you want, you can put in the chat box as well. I know there are some moms out there who absolutely detest doing laundry. Like to them, it's even worse than, you know, packing lunches or something else, which I totally get. All right, Terry says that you use Instacart app as your shopping list or Target app and they just add things as they run out. Yep, perfect. I agree. Well, I hope that you guys found this helpful. It's, it was certainly fun talking about it. I'm always looking for ideas on how to make my life easier. So you are welcome to send me an email or text me or give me a ring. I'm more than happy to, to kind of chat and of course make improvements to this workshop as we keep it going in the preparation for the school year. So if nothing else, we're going to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. You have a great night. And, oh, can you share your stain removal list if you have an electronic version? I do. I'm going to go take it off my thing, and then I'm going to scan it for you, and then I'll send it over. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so have a great weekend, everybody. And we hope I hope to see you again at one of our future workshops. Bye. Yes, the recording is going to be sent to you. Let me see, look, let me respond.